And I have been waiting for the uh, leafless, leafless months to start adding some evergreen and coniferous trees to this channel. I've done the American holly, which is evergreen, back in early November. And I'm going to, uh, and I did do the Atlantic, or excuse me, the northern white cedar and eastern red cedar during the growing season. But let's get started on some of the coniferous plants that are found in some of the areas covered by this channel. I kind of have about a four or five hundred mile radius which I travel to do my ex explorations. So that covers most of the Ohio Valley, in the states of uh, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, southern Michigan, New York State, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and points beyond sometimes. So, and the eastern and northern part of that area, the eastern hemlock is a very common plant. But in southern Indiana, where I'm hiking today, it is very rare. Um, if you look at the range map, there's only a few dots on the range map in southern Indiana and western Ohio. Um, this plant will grow and prosper in areas that are shady and moist. And I am on a northwest-facing bluff here overlooking the Muscatatuck River in southern Indiana in Jennings County. And I, one of the reasons I chose this park to visit today, and this is a very unadvertised park called the Cali, C-A-L-L-I, Nature Preserve in North Seymour, Indiana. One of the reasons I chose this hike was because it was supposed to have northern hemlock. And it does, and it's right along the loop trail if you take the longer loop. So we're looking at some of the foliage here, the, the needles, and even some pine or um, hemlock cones on this. And there's some larger hemlock trees in the background here overlooking this river. Again, this is the side of the river that faces northwest and would hold its moisture better. These plants are um, not heat tolerant at all. So what I have growing with it is some American beech and some basswood, which are also plants you would find in the cooler habitats. And if you took your thermometer and put it underneath this hemlock tree on a day in July and put your thermometer across the river there where there's an open field, there would be a huge difference in temperature. The microclimate allows this to survive here. And what I've got for scale here is a U.S. currency penny. And let's get those needles to come into focus here. They're about a half inch long. And they are flat. Most of the... um. Pines and spruces have needles that are not flat, but these are flat. They're, they're um, smooth on both sides. And that little hemlock cone there is about the size of a penny. So for scale, that's what we're looking at. I'll flip these over. You can see there's some white lines on the back of these. Fortunately, I'm not finding ed any evidence of the um, hemlock woolly adelgid, which Adelgid, which has decimated the populations of hemlocks east of east of Interstate 81 in the Shenandoah and Great Smoky Mountains area, there are skeletons of what used to be huge hemlocks. And it's a shame, but um, that's nature. Something will take their place, and um, perhaps these isolated populations out here in Indiana can survive and keep the species alive. And there are places in northern New York and northern Vermont where it's just too cold in the winter for the adelgid to kill the hemlocks. It just doesn't survive well in the really, really frigid weather they get in those climates. So the species is probably not in jeopardy, but in certain parts of this country, it is becoming very rare to find a tree that is either health, is health, completely healthy or, not de or, or completely dead. Many are either dead or dying in the uh, eastern part of the um, central Appalachians and southern Appalachians. I do find quite a bit of it still looking healthy in Kentucky where I hike. And these look fine. I don't see any evidence here. And that's a good thing. So um, this is the eastern hemlock and in a very unusual location. 